I am now pleased to transition to our final panel today, our federal panel, and joining me is uh, Commissioner Tootin and Deputy Secretary Beaudreau. If Do we want to come up to the, to the uh, podium together? It has been, thank you. I, I do have the pleasure of being the Assistant Secretary for Water and Science at the Department of the Interior. It has been a privilege to work closely with, in my role with oversight for the Bureau of Reclamation and the U.S. Geological Survey, but also to work closely with many other colleagues and bureaus in the Department of the Interior and with our leadership team. It's been a pleasure to serve with Secretary Holland and the other members within the department who are working on these critical issues. This morning, we are joined, I am joined by Commissioner Tutin. She will emphasize the important work of the Bureau of Reclamation to manage the resources in the basin and help address our challenges. I would like to thank her and the Reclamation team for their tremendous efforts. As I mentioned, we, are, we also want to acknowledge several other bureaus from the department with important responsibilities within the basin. These include the USGS, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the National Park Service, and the Bureau of Land Management. I know we have several employees here that attend this conference, and we want to thank you for your partnership and your continued service as we work through our issues. After we hear from Commissioner Tootin, I will provide more details on how we are addressing the unprecedented challenges that we are seeing. And then we are very honored to have our Deputy Secretary, Tommy Bodro, here with us today. He will amplify and confirm the efforts we are currently have underway to ensure we can continue to meet our responsibilities to manage the system in coordination with the many partners that we have throughout the basin. We will all share the same level of concern about the risks we are seeing and the actions we are taking to collectively manage the issues that we, that we face. So first, I am very pleased to introduce my friend and colleague, Commissioner Tootin. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Camille Klinlim Tutin, and I am the Commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation. It is an honor to be here in person with you today and in my hometown. I've had the opportunity to meet with many of you throughout the week and throughout the year. Through these conversations, I've learned about your viewpoints and your concerns about the Colorado River Basin and the challenges that we face together. I can feel the anxiety and the uncertainty in this room and in the basin as we look at the river and the hydrology that we face. There are a lot of questions, the what, the how, but first let me tell you the why. The why is you and the 40 million people who call this basin home. This last year has been a culmination of 23 years of drought on the Colorado River Basin. As my colleagues at Reclamation and many of the panelists have stated at this conference and have made very clear, the hotter and drier conditions that we face today are not temporary. Climate change is here today and has made it likely that we will continue to see conditions like this if not worse, in the future. So in two weeks, we will not only enter just a new year, but a new century under the Colorado River Compact. 
a century that is full of unknown challenges and an opportunity for new collaborative framework. We are acting now to protect the Colorado River system and the future of America's hardest working river because at the heart of our why is how we are striving to meet the water needs of the environment, the ecosystems, the economies, and the millions of people across seven states, 30 tribal nations, and the Republic of Mexico who call this basin home. Reclamation is committed to using the best available science, transparency in our process, and taking action to make a difference. Let me share what we have done together this year to confront the challenges posed by the ongoing drought. In the first 11 months of the bipartisan infrastructure law implementation, Reclamation hosted 12 information sessions, many of which you attended, and worked with many of you on allocating a historic sum of 1.3 billion for 114 water infrastructure projects across the West. Half of that 1.3 billion was in the Colorado River Basin states. And to put that in perspective, that investment that was made by President Biden in Congress, we are a $1.5 billion annual agency. We spent double our budget in 22. And thanks to the leadership of the Biden-Harris administration, congressional support, and your advocacy, Reclamation was one of the first governmental agencies to receive its allocation under the Inflation Reduction Act. And we issued a drought mitigation funding opportunity within six weeks of the president signing that bill into law. And under the Lower Basin System Conservation and Efficiency Program, Reclamation received nearly three dozen proposals from communities, farmers, ranchers, and tribes in Arizona for compensated, and California, for compensated voluntary water reductions aimed at protecting critical elevations at Lake Mead and Lake Powell. We will follow up this funding opportunity for long-term water efficiency projects aimed at stabilizing the Colorado River system in early 2023. And recently, we announced a $250 million investment funded by the Inflation Reduction Act that will enable additional water conservation by California while addressing impacts to the communities and the environment around the Salton Sea. That money is in the bank. And California Resources Natural Secretary Wade Cookfoot, our partner, is here today. And I look forward to working with him and our partners in getting that done. We are actively supporting the Upper Basin's Five Point Plan. We will provide approximately $50 million in bipartisan infrastructure law, drought contingency planning money for enhanced measurement monitoring and reporting of infrastructure. We've been working with the upper, upper Division Basin States to be ready to implement an Upper Basin System Conservation Program if reauthorized by Congress. And finally, we are continuing to implement the 2022 Drought, Con Drought Response Operations Plan. And we're starting work on the 2023 plan in the coming weeks. In October, we initiated the necessary supplemental EIS process to revise Colorado River operations to ensure that we have the tools to protect the Colorado River system as early as next year and through 2026. We started this process under the urgent timeline demanded by dramatically changing hydrology. And as our team has outlined, the plan is to issue a record of decision in just six months. To put that timeline into context, numerous agreements in this basin took years to complete. And given the urgency and the timeline of the SEIS, we hope a consensus alternative emerges from the basin before the end of January in order to incorporate its full analysis into the SEIS process. 
And we're not just looking at today or tomorrow or next week. We're preparing to develop new operating guidelines to replace the 2007 guidelines that expire in 2026. This year, Reclamation issued a Federal Register notice requesting your input on the development of a post-2026 guidelines. In early 2023, we will publish a report summarizing the comments and begin the formal scoping process. These milestones speak to the urgency in which Reclamation and the Department of the Interior are leading and promoting collaborative solutions for the basin. But I want to take a moment today and recognize the people who made these actions happen. My teammates at the Bureau of Reclamation. And please stand if you're in the room today. We, along with the 5,400 people who make up this organization, many who live in this basin, are your partners. And I thank you for rising to the occasion and to this challenge. To our Basin partners, I speak to you now not as the Commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation, but as a Westerner, as a Nevadan who grew up with the Colorado River as my backyard, as a person who calls this Basin home, as a mother working for a future for the Colorado River Basin that our children deserve. When we talk about protecting the system, about the infrastructure, making it more resilient, we are talking about people. We are protecting people, and we are taking the necessary steps to make sure that the 40 million people who depend on the Colorado River for our lives and our livelihood. Reclamation stands to be your partner. Reclamation is ready to protect the river. Red Reclamation is ready to work with you. Hagamos esto juntos. Let's get it done together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner Tootin, for the heartfelt words and for teaching me about this little platform back here behind the stage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, uh, uh, all of us who are, who are citizens of the basin share, share the concerns and the desire to, to protect the system for the benefit of the future generations who are coming. We have had a very difficult year. You have heard from the earlier panels and the presentations this week that we are experiencing unprecedented drought conditions such that people do not even call the situation drought anymore. The modeling projections that our experts have shared widely throughout the basin indicate the extreme level of risk that we face. These challenges are such that they threaten our ability to continue to operate our infrastructure. And the dire conditions that we see rightly place a lot of focus and attention on our basin and the issues that we are facing. As the commissioner noted, because of the importance of the agricultural uses in the basin, because of the importance of a sacred river system that we have that supplies water to our important tribal nations, because of the importance of the natural resources that we have here, like the Grand Canyon, and the fact that this river is a source of drinking water for over 40 million people who live in many communities, large and small, in both the United States and Mexico. 
because of the many important issues we have in the basin, we have been thinking about these issues critically within the department. And as we have been announcing since August, we have a shared responsibility to continue to take additional actions to protect the system. During this past year, we have taken unprecedented steps with our partners throughout the basin to ensure that our infrastructure could remain reliable and that the water resources we have would remain available. Last August in 2021, we announced that the 2022 conditions that we saw would trigger the first ever lower basin shortages. This year, we are initiating those shortages in the lower basin, and those include voluntary reductions to contractors in Arizona, Nevada, and to our deliveries in Mexico. Last winter, guided by our technical experts and infrastructure managers, we started discussions about what additional steps we may need to be taking to protect the system and protect the critical infrastructure that we, that we have at Glen Canyon Dam. We convened discussions among states, conferred with our tribal communities, conferred with our partners in Mexico, and developed a technical proposal to build upon the existing drought contingency plan that includes the Upper Basin Drought Response Operations Agreements, and we developed a proposal to release water from upstream reservoirs and to reduce releases from Lake Powell to Lake Mead in order to try to stabilize the water levels at Lake Powell. These actions were unprecedented, and they were measures that had to be developed to respond to the critical conditions we were seeing and the need to protect that infrastructure. This August, we announced operating conditions for 2023. And at that time, we triggered the first ever tier two shortages in the lower basin for the coming year. But we also signaled the need to evaluate additional actions beyond the existing agreements we have in order to protect the infrastructure that is holding our system together. On October 28th, we issued a notice of intent to prepare a supplemental environmental impact statement that will evaluate additional actions outside the boundaries of the compliance framework that we have to date. For the past two months, our teams have been working to develop at least three proposed alternatives for us to evaluate in that process. These alternatives will include a no action alternative, but that alternative actually involves a lot of actions. It incorporates all of the existing agreements that we have worked on for the past 20 years. But as, noted, as we noted in our notice of intent, our existing modeling indicates that we need to be doing much more in order to address the current risks that we see. Therefore, we will also develop a framework agree agreement alternative. That alternative would de be, be developed as an additional set of actions that would build upon the, the existing framework that we have for our operations. This alternative would likely build on commitments and obligations developed within the United States, among the states, with our basin tribes, with non-governmental organizations, and build upon the agreements, expanding upon them as we develop our planning for the next steps. And finally, the third alternative that we are developing is a reservoir operations modification alternative this alternative would be developed as a set of actions and measures adopted 
pursuant to secretarial authority under applicable federal law. This alternative will consider any inadequacies or limitations from our framework alternative and will consider how the Secretary's authority could complement the actions in the alternative, the actions that we have developed that may not be sufficient to mitigate the current and projected risks that we see. While we are working to develop these alternatives, we will continue to engage with all of you, with our basin tribes, with our states and our partners across the basin, including our partners with Mexico, our partners in Mexico, to develop additional voluntary agreements to meet and achieve the reduction amounts that we need in the system. The challenges we face today require emergency operational actions, but we are also simultaneously working on evaluating the next round of operational guidelines for the system. And as the commissioner noted, we will be initiating a formal process for that process, for that process as part of a larger environmental impact analysis later this spring. At the Department of the Interior, we are committed to working closely with all of the entities in the basin to resolve the issues that we have in this current crisis. But it will take contributions from all of us, contributions from all of the states and all of the sectors. We have a shared responsibility to continue to take actions to protect the system for our future generations so to confirm this responsibility for our department, I am very honored to introduce our Deputy Secretary, Tommy Bodro, to, pro to provide our final remarks. Thank you very much, Tommy, for your leadership and guidance as we move through this difficult process. All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, and it is a real pleasure <coughs> for me to be, join you at CRUA this year. Uh, I want to thank uh, CRUA and all the organizers of this year's very successful conference uh, and, thank, uh, and am thankful to be alongside uh, my friends and colleagues, Commissioner Tutin and Assistant Secretary Trujillo. And I want to thank uh, Senator Kelly for getting us started this morning uh, with a NEPA joke that hit a little close to home. Um, but as Homer Simpson once said, it's funny because it's true. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to join all of you to discuss the actions and partnerships that are needed to address the worsening drought crisis and most importantly to protect the Colorado River uh, and all of the users. Here's what's at stake. Our reality is clear. The prolonged drought afflicting the West is one of the most significant challenges facing the United States uh, and Mexico and all of our communities. The growing drought crisis is driven by the effects of climate change, including fundamentally changing hydrology, uh, and that is just the stark reality. The Colorado River is the lifeblood of a system on which more than 40 million people in the American Southwest depend for basic human needs like food, water, and electricity. Secretary Holland and I have heard directly from people navigating these profound challenges. From tribes, farmers, irrigators, mayors and county commissioners, and federal and state water managers, we all care deeply about the river and managing our way through this new reality. Everyone here recognizes the severity of this moment. Without immediate and decisive actions, elevations at Lake Powell and Mead could force the system to stop functioning. That's an intolerable condition that we won't allow happen. So here's what our strategy is to address the drought crisis. Despite the dire conditions we face, we at the department know that we can and must develop new solutions 
for mitigating decreasing water supplies. We will do this through our shared values and commitment to protecting the river and the system on which we all depend. We'll do this through science. Our engineers and hydrologists and water managers have the data, technology, and knowledge to ensure that our actions are guided by the best available science uh, and the best modeling. And I appreciate very much our reclamation team uh, for presenting to everybody here today uh, that information. We work from a common understanding of the hydrology and the science, and that will enable us uh, to work together to develop the most uh, beneficial solutions. And we'll do it through our capacity. Across the Interior Department, we have thousands of dedicated people with broad responsibilities in the basin, from the Bureaus of Reclamation and Indian Affairs to the Fish and Wildlife Service, National Park Service, Bureau of Land Management. Our teams work together on a daily basis to ensure that we are delivering a unified and cohesive approach to addressing the challenges in the basin. And extremely importantly, we're gonna do this through creativity and a shared understanding that unprecedented conditions require new solutions. The current frameworks for managing these systems, which have served us well over the past century, are buckling under the stress of climate change, prolonged drought, and drastically altered hydrology. The people in this room know that all of this because you see it every day. We need new thinking, new solutions, your creativity, and more than ever, your partnership. The Colorado River Basin is actually thousands of communities, states, tribal nations, cities and towns, farms and ecosystems. But fundamentally, it's actually one community comprised of 40 million people and landscapes that we all cherish and are responsible for sustaining so that our children and grandchildren can continue to rely on and be nurtured by this system. Finally, Thanks to the work in Congress and our representatives like Senator Kelly uh, and uh, folks in the Senate and the House representing the entire basin, we have resources. Between each state, tribe, and across the federal government, we have programs and funding in place to both minimize the impacts of drought and develop long-term plans to facilitate conservation and economic growth. Historic investments from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, the Inflation Reduction Act, and funding for existing programs like Water Smart are being directed toward an all-of-government approach to address the drought crisis. As we continue to direct these generational investments across the basin, we're part prioritizing partnership and transparency, providing assistance to impacted communities and developing long-term solutions to climate change and drought. The department will engage directly and faithfully with all of our partners and stakeholders at every turn. We're with you every step of the way as the basin develops new ideas, frameworks, and solutions to conserve water and sustain the system. And so here's the bottom line uh, and the fundamental message that I'm here to talk with all of you about today. Our strategy is to provide the incentives and the process necessary to bring solutions forward and to drive new thinking, consensus, and ultimately protect and sustain the system and the services it provides. This is what Camille and Tanya are talking about. As operators of Hoover and Glen Canyon, among other things, the Interior Department and Reclamation are an indispensable party to these conversations. But more than that, it is our responsibility to drive the conversations forward and to convert our collaboration into actions to sustain the system. We're gonna do that, and in the coming three months are absolutely critical. All that said, I am encouraged by the conversations among the basin states, including here in Las Vegas this week, but now is the time. 
The reality we face is undeniable. Only by working together with our collective interests in mind can we ensure the longevity of the basin. To be clear, the challenge is extraordinary, but it's not temporary. The science tells us it's our new reality. The department has the resources to take us into this new reality with confidence. We are taking steps to implement historic funding and develop new operational guidelines that will work for the Colorado River of today and tomorrow. We must challenge ourselves to develop sophisticated and clear-eyed alternatives that can sustain the system in the coming decades that are based on collaboration and an inclusive process. By working together, I am confident we will develop innovative strategies to help communities address hydrologic variability in the basin and throughout the West. Finally, as Commissioner Tootin touched on, I want to thank the dedicated career professionals across the Bureau of Reclamation and the Interior Department at large who have worked tirelessly over the past several weeks and months to develop uh, solutions to help us all address the crisis. The future of the Colorado River and the lifeblood of the American West depend on this group of dedicated individuals and on all of you. The department looks forward to building on this historic and invaluable partnership. And truly, thank you again uh, for the opportunity to talk with you today.